Welcome. Thank you for coming and watching this parent preparation video and hopefully you can watch this with your young person. Um, it's a very special gift, this uh, confirmation preparation for your teenager. As these young people change, God wants to give them a very special gift of grace to help them on their journey, to strengthen them, to transform them. He wants to implant gifts of the Holy Spirit and he wants to strengthen them so the fruits of the Holy Spirit will come forward. And you'll see that in the process of the preparation. Now, I'd like to thank in a very special way our teachers, uh, the principal, the staff of St. Cornelius. It's a very special gift that I'm allowed to go into the school. So I want to thank them for that. The other thing is I want to thank you parents for taking the responsibility and doing what you can to help these young people. I know you've been working with them for many, many years, and you know them, you know them better than I do. However, I may be able to push and challenge and push them in a way that might encourage you to get into a deeper relationship with them. And that's what this program is about. It's about interactive relationship because you need to get closer to them, they need to get closer to you. So um, we're very grateful for that, especially in our present day because young people especially, um, they can get influenced in, in a way by the television and by the internet and influence that way. I must admit, I think when I was younger, when I was 17, anybody over 20 didn't know a thing. And it was only when I got over 20 that I started to grow up. So it is one of those struggles that we work with. Now, um, during the program, I just wanted to let you know that um, as part of the program, of course, there's a letter from the bishop and we always have these boundary issues. And the boundary issues are always a problem because in the parish, we have, this is our parish boundary. Uh, of course, St. Patrick's is here and the Airport Road. We have uh, St. Marguerite de Ville and a lot of the other Brampton parishes are on our board, including the Orangeville and of course, Tottingham and uh, uh, Culver. So because we're bordering all these parishes, the school boundaries are a little bigger than the parish boundaries. So sometimes the young people are not necessarily part of our parish which is a bit of a problem. So what the church does is it always sets up a, an opportunity for people to belong to the parish in two ways. One is what we call domicile, you live within the boundaries, and this is the parish you regularly attend. Or if you register with the envelopes, then of course we know that you are part of the parish through habitual attendance, which we call quasi-domicile. So that way, then we can find a way to be sure that people are able to be confirmed with their class if they so choose. However, sacraments should really be received in the parishes you normally attend. So keep that in mind. Um, also, uh, as we move through, of course, you're going to get letters about the sacraments. And this one's kind of important, this dear parent letter, because if there's a text, which there often is, it talks about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So some of these are already there for you, so it's important. So as you look through them, you'll see. So if you look in this letter here, it talks about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you know, wisdom, understanding, counsel, knowledge, fortitude, piety, and then the fruits of the Holy Spirit um, are self-control, gentleness, faithfulness, peace, patience, generosity, love, joy, on and on. So the answers are there. So keep that in mind. Also, um, as you move through with the expectations, it's a little different this year because of the pandemic, which is a bit of a problem. We will also have these films from um, um, Dynamic Catholic, and they're done by um, uh, Matthew Kelly. So what I'm gonna do now, though, is I wanna show you a film that helps to kind of unpack what the program can be like. So we're gonna show you the film, it's called The Choice. It's a little dated, but um, you'll know, uh, you should be able to know by the cars <laughs> how dated it is. However, if I can get this working properly, let's see if I can do this. And if I can do this, play.
Things were pretty mixed up in my life. I was a little older than you. My parents couldn't afford to send me to college. <laughs> Besides, my grades weren't all that hot anyway. And all I really, really wanted to do was to get where. <laughs> then Carlos was shot. Uh, Carlos was my boyfriend. And he was killed. <laughs> See, there's a whole bunch of us that used to run around together. We were sort of a gang, I guess. I mean, we just liked being together, doing things together. You know, being a part of each other. Well, one evening we were leaving this party, and someone mistook Carlos for another guy, and they shot him. Hurt for an awfully long time. Like when my mom died. How'd you get over it, Christina? Well, I tried lots of things. Things I really don't want you to know about. But nothing worked. And then I started to pray. I just didn't know what to do. So I prayed. But nothing happened at first. But one day, one day, I really, really felt God's presence. Kim, it was great. It was like what I had with Carlos and my friends. And for the first time in a long, long time, I really felt like I could believe in something, belong to something. But not that it's that easy, Kim, okay? Not by a long shot. I'd like to feel like that, close to God. But it's no use. All this religion stuff my dad's making me learn, it's such a drag. Well, all I can tell you, Kim, is that God helped me get my act together. I'm working, I'm going to school. Next year I get my degree. Listen, you'll make it. Finish your homework? Look, I get up early tonight. My apartment's just down the street from the church. Why don't we share a pizza at my house before you get to class tonight? Gee, that sounds great. Does it? Good. Now you get your things together. I gotta pick up something in the kitchen. Why are you bringing so much food? You can't eat all this. You'll see. Wilma! Okay. Wilma! TV show. Wilma, this is my friend Kim. Oh, hi. Wilma? Wilma? Get out of the way. I'm going to take these newspapers to the recycling center. Don't take too many. I may need them. Wilma, you've got so many of them. They're going to fall on you one day. Never fall. Oh, Kim, will you put the girls' rooms in the refrigerator and leave a pizza out for Wilma? She doesn't want to eat in front of strangers. Why do you keep going over that? It's so crazy. Doesn't that mess bother you? Kim, Wilma's a nice old lady. She needs a friend. But she's so uh, dirty. Took me a while to get used to it. You know, a lot of it's her skin. It's old and dry and all that. I give her a bath once a week. Isn't it gross? Seeing her naked? Touching her? Why doesn't her family take care of her? Mm, she doesn't have a family. I'm a really friend. I drop in on her every day to check her out. You're weird. <laughs> How can people as fun, Kim? Wait till you meet Tony. Who's Tony? Oh, hi, I know where I'm gonna move. Sorry, Tony, I'm gonna have to jump you. Now, what are you gonna do, huh? No. No. <laughs> How did you know I wanted to move there? It's obvious. You're pretty good, but I bet you're not as good as Christine. Wanna try me? Yeah. You take her on? Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. You gotta match then. Okay? <laughs>
and they bleed things, not take them. Kimberly, I'm here. Really are weird. <laughs> and what they really are. Can't judge a book by its cover, babe. Like Loma. <laughs> yeah. Like me? You 
know how tired I've been lately. Well, it's more than just being tired. I'm really sick. My parents are gonna come this afternoon to take me back home. I won't be back. I won't be coming back. What's that? It's my confirmation papers. My dad says if they're not filled out, I can't go to the concert on Saturday. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters anymore. Why didn't you tell me you were sick? There's nothing you could have done. I'll be okay. You can't go, Christina. I was going to ask you to be my confirmation sponsor. I want to be like you, and now you won't even be here. We can write each other. Uh, maybe we can talk on the phone once in a while. Oh, Kim, don't worry. Keep in touch. Uh, I'm so happy you're going to be confirmed. And I'm really honored that you want me to be your sponsor. I'll be there in spirit, okay? And uh, Mrs. Constantine can stand in for me. I haven't done any Christian service yet, and it's almost too late. Who says you haven't done any service? What do you think you've been doing all these months? Being a Christian doesn't stop with baptism. Christina, you can't go. Who's gonna help woman with her back? Who's gonna take care of her? Somebody has to carry her. I can come up after school. But it won't be the same without you. decision point. Confirmation program and the links in your letter. Um, and these are free online. The books, of course, we're going to supply uh, with your things when we get going. Uh, what the heck happened here? Okay, I'm in the wrong spot. Okay, decision point to the videos. Here we go, Dynamic Cafe. That's the source. So in these videos, they're just short little videos that give you an opportunity to, uh, to kind of have discussions with uh, your teenager, and not only you, but also the, um, it, they're great for the sponsor and the young person to have dialogue. 
This is just a short little one, so, and most of them are three to five minutes. So we'll just show you this one so you can see it. And there's 72 of these, and some will be shown in the classroom, and some will be, uh, some will be able to be seen at home, but certainly they can be seen with your sponsor too. from time to time to pause and think about how's the journey going? Are we on the right path? Have we made a wrong turn? Are we happy with how the journey is progressing? Or do we feel like we're moving in the wrong direction? And let's face it, there's so many paths to choose in this journey we call life. And everyone in your life wants you to walk a different path. Everyone in your life is trying to encourage you to walk this path or that path Ultimately, you have to decide which are the right paths for you. You get to choose. What paths are you choosing every day? What paths will you choose today? What are going to be the most important paths you choose to walk in your life? <laughs> dealership the other day to buy a new car and the salesman's walking me through all the features of the car and when you buy a car there's some things that come standard but then there's this whole list of options different things that you can have put on your car and one of the options of course is navigation and the salesman says to me do you want navigation or not human beings come with navigation as standard equipment unlike cars You've got navigation, you have the ability to reason, you can think things through, and you have conscience. That quiet voice within you that's always guiding you towards what is good and right and away from what is bad and wrong. That quiet voice within you that's always guiding you toward the best version of yourself and away from that second-rate version of yourself. And so reason and conscience, uh, the navigation that God gives us, along with the Holy Spirit to guide us in this journey that is life. After 200 yards, turn right. But there's no point in having navigation if you don't use it, right? After 400 yards, turn right. You have navigation in your car, but if you don't turn it on, then you can end up as lost as the person who doesn't have navigation. And that's what happens sometimes in our lives. You know, God gives us the Holy Spirit to guide us, to navigate us. He gives us reason to guide us and navigate us. He gives us conscience to guide us and navigate. He's given us navigation. But lots of the time we, we ignore the navigation, right? And that's when we end up lost. Spirit, reason, and conscience, 
We all go off the path from time to time, don't we? We all ignore the navigation system from time to time. We all make bad choices, bad decisions, and from time to time we do the wrong thing. It's like sometimes I'm driving in the car and I think I know better than the navigation system. And the navigation system will say, turn right in 100 feet. But I turn left, I think, ah, oh, the navigation system is wrong this time. I ignore the navigation system, I go left, what happens? I end up lost. It turns out the navigation system was right. And then what happens? What does the navigation system do? The navigation system says, recalculate. It took some time beautiful things about our God is our God is a God of second chance. The truth is we all need a second chance from time to time. We all make mistakes. We all make bad choices, bad decisions. We all wander off the right path from time to time. And what does our God say? Our God says recalculate it. And isn't that a thing of beauty? So wherever you are in your journey, maybe you have made some bad choices. Maybe you are on the wrong path. All you need to do is turn back to God and say, God, I need you to recalculate my journey for me. The truth is, he's already recalculated it. He's constantly recalculating your journey so that he can help you become the person he created you to be. God's dream, he wants you to become the best version of yourself. And he is recalculating on a daily basis to help you become that best version of yourself and get to where he created you to be. All we gotta do, turn the navigation system back on. There are a thousand paths you can walk in this life, but God has picked out a path just for you. I was driving on the road the other day and there was this sign at the end of the road, it said private road. That road belongs to somebody, it's, it's just for that person. And God, he's designed a private road just for you. St. Augustine lived more than 1500 years ago and he wrote, our hearts are restless until they rest in you, O Lord. For 1500 years, Christians of all ages and from all walks of life, in every country around the world have been drawing inspiration from these words. The truth is, you're never really going to be happy until you find the path that God has created just for you. Needless to say, this is a much more modern version of the program, but it's a great version that you can uh, uh, take part with your young person and talk about what it means, how you uh, live your life in decisions and how you make decisions and how things go. It's, um, it's a great opportunity for sponsors to get involved too and to have these discussions in life because life is full of all kinds of challenges boy, we need a little bit of direction from time to time. And I'll tell you, it is so easy to turn the other way and go the wrong way. I, I've done it a number of times myself. Um, I still remember uh, down in Florida, uh, I knew the golf course was down this road and I thought, well, I'm turning left here. And the navigator says, no, no, go 500 feet and turn left. And I'm going, no, no, it's right here. And of course I turn right around the corner big hole in the road, they're doing construction, and I gotta turn around and go back. So it's like, uh, navigation usually knows better than I do. Now in your uh, forms, you're gonna notice that there's a, um, a Christian service form, just as in the first film where you saw that um, Christina and Kim were involved in special things. Christian service form is in your package, and we're asking our young people to do an hour of Christian service a week. Now, the reason why we put the Sunday date down is we're trying to get them to do it for Christ, not for the community. 
because it's not really community service, it's Christian service. And then of course, there's a number of different things. And um, as we move along with this, I'm not 100% sure how this is gonna all work itself out. Once the lockdown is open, of course, we'd like to see people coming to church on a regular basis. Um, with the pandemic, the enrollment ceremonies probably aren't gonna happen. We're gonna have trouble with a retreat. We are gonna try to divide, design a retreat that will take place in the school. So uh, that'll be something we can do. It's gonna be a, a bit of a struggle through all of this to try to work itself out. So uh, it's something to keep in mind. Uh, I mean, all of these things that we would normally do are a bit of a problem. The one thing we can do, if the young people are interested, is we do have this chili program where we create a chili and it's frozen at home and then you bring it in, there's a freezer in the front porch of the house by the office and then we send it down to the Good Shepherd Refuge to feed the poor. Uh, the clothing drive, of course, we can't do anymore and all those things, a lot of the stuff we can't do. Choosing a confirmation name is an important thing because some people choose a name with their own name because it's a saint's name. So just to give you an idea, my name is actually Robert Thomas Anthony Francis Glynn. So I have four saints. So you give four saints to your kids, serves you right, you're gonna get a priest. <laughs> and of course I didn't like him, I wanted to be Bob. So it's funny how that happens, but um, you can either choose one of the saints names that you were given in your first name or middle name, or you can choose another one. If you, and then there's a little project here to tell us a little bit about the saint that you're choosing, whether it be your name or the, uh, the other. The three minutes a day, the application form is actually online. The sponsor application form will be given to you uh, in your package that you're gonna get next week. So keep that in mind. Uh, and of course, there's a, a confirmation covenant form for the sponsor. And remember, th this form has two different things. So candidate and sponsor. So one is signed and given to the candidate, one is signed and kept by the sponsor. And these are promissory agreements that the sponsor's making with your young person. So read them over and keep that in mind. Then of course the envelopes are there and with all kinds of different things. So six ways to communicate with your young person, sp sponsor roles and relationships, 21 parenting hints, and on and on, things about, you know, what's your outlook on life, qualities of the spirit, getting in touch, one me, what are the admiring qualities that your young person has of others. These are good for you to discuss and talk about. Then, of course, the parenting hints are there, uh, and uh, six ways to communicate clearly with the team, uh, and, of course, the church and all that stuff. So um, keep that in mind. They're the things that I think are most important. Also, um, it's, it's really kind of crucial that you understand that we're going to do everything we can to be helpful. Teachers are going to do everything they can to be helpful. However, um, we need you to put a little more effort in. And I know you put in 13 years effort, so I'm asking you to go just a little further. But there's a wonderful story that might be helpful. It's a true story. Um, from 1989, there was an earthquake in Armenia. And in this earthquake in Armenia, uh, buildings were collapsing all over the place. It was an 8.7 on the earth, the scale, and in, what was it, three minutes, there were some 80,000 people died. And uh, of course, uh, this parent, uh, the dad and mom were in a building and half the building collapsed and they were okay. And immediately mom said, go see our mate, go see our mate, go to the school. So the dad left the house and he started to go to the school. And as he was getting closer and closer to the school, the buildings were more and more and more in rubble. And that was a, a real worry for him. And when he got to the school, the whole school had collapsed. And he just fell to the ground. He was crying. He was overwhelmed. Eh? And uh, of course, didn't know what to do. And something rolled around in the back of his head. He said that I had made a promise to my son, no matter what, I would always be there for you. So he got up and he found the courage to start looking around. And he found some stones that looked like they came from the facade or the front of the building. And then he tried to figure out where the classroom was because he knew where it was in the school. And then he started to dig. And as he dug, of course, the fire department came by and he said, no, no, it's dangerous. Go away, go away. And he says, will you help me dig? And they left. Then the police showed up. 
They said, you can't stay here, it's dangerous, it's bad, you know, it's really, you, you gotta leave. And he, they, all he said was, will you help me dig? And he kept digging, 16 hours, 18 hours, 24 hours. By the time he got to the 36th hour, he pulled a stone away and he heard some little children crying. And he said, Armin, Armin, are you there? And he said, yes, daddy, I'm here. He says, give me your hand. And he says, no, take the other children first, daddy. I told them you'd come. I told them you promised I'd always be there for you. And he reached down and he saved seven children. From that school, only seven children lived. There was a, a big concrete piece of the roof that fell down in a triangular position and saved their lives. And it was a miracle. And I would say to you, with these young people, these young people are such a precious gift. These young people are a gift to the world. They're God's gift. Each and every one of them have such unique gifts, such unique things that are given to the world. And I would say, help me dig. Help me dig and tear away at all the garbage that the world is teaching them to tell them how important they are, how loved they are, how precious they are. Every single one of them has a special gift a special opportunity to love, a special way to transform the world. We need to help Dave so that they can be saved. So we're grateful for that. Then, of course, um, the last story I might share with you was one of Matthew Kelly's stories. He always says that, um, um, well, I'll tell it another time. But we have uh, confirmation last year. We ended up having to do it differently. So uh, we'll send this out. Last year, we actually did it in October, November, but um, we tried to find a way to catch up our young people. So in the process of this, um, it's gonna be a little more complicated. So we're gonna send you an email with direct instructions. So I wanna thank you all for being here. I wanna thank you for coming, and I wanna thank you for watching. And I wanna ask you to help me dig. Get at their souls, get at the beauty, the deepness of the giftedness of who they are. And let us pray this day in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be recreated, and you shall renew the face of the earth. And we ask this, the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed, glorious, and wonderful day. Thank you.